Okay, Murray, get your mail ready for Murray's mail. I will once the new delivery guy brings it. Everything going well? Yeah, everything's fine. Ooh, since you're here, I wanted to ask you about the budget for the show. The show? Well, the Odd Pod show. I wanted to ask you what the budget is for it. The budget? Yeah. There is no budget. What? I'm sure the show will be fine. Just do your best. Flip, Boglin, could you please make some title cards for the show's segments, please? Okay, dude. I will try and get some money for the show to help with expenses. Thank you. We'll do our best to keep the show going till then. Delivery for Mr. Murray? So you're the new mail delivery thing, are you? Yes, I am, sir. My name is Brock Cardigan, and I'm... I really don't care, so thanks for the mail. Go back to Fraggle Rock or wherever it is you came from. Wait a minute. This is blank. Uh-oh. Why is this blank? Where's my mail for Murray's mail? Uh, well, Mr. Murray, today's my first day. I only had one job, and that was to deliver the mail for Murray's mail, but, well, there wasn't any, so I didn't want to deliver nothing. But you did deliver nothing! I, uh, well, you see, uh... Dan! Why do I have no mail? Dan! Uh-oh. Well, I guess I should let you get on with things. Good luck. I have no mail! <sighs> While I sort this out, you can enjoy a temporary blindness. How can I do Murray's Ooh, mail I, with yeah, no mail? Yeah. You see, um... Hey everybody, welcome to OddPod, I'm Dan and this is Temporary Blindness, the part of OddPod where I open pogs and cards and stickers and other things you don't know what's inside until you open them. And on this one we have three packs of Big Deal Cool Caps. You get four cool caps and one slammer. So pogs, basically. If it ain't a big deal, it ain't cool, dude. So I can't find a date on these, I'm guessing 95 maybe? If I find a date I'll put it um, below. But yeah, I think I remember these ones. I'm not sure. There were so many different kinds of like pogs and caps and stuff. They were like horror caps and cool caps and the official pogs. There were all sorts of different ones. So I have three packs of big deal cool caps. So let's have a look and see what they're like. So it's got like a big deal rule thing. Feel free to pause and read that if you want to. Very, very cool. Avoid crummy imitations. Cool, so let's have a look and see what kind of milk caps, pogs, caps, whatever you call them. Let's see what kind we get in this pack. Ugh, there we go. Oh, they're quite tough, these. Huh? So you get a collector's, let's see, cool cap special t-shirt offer for collectors. There you go. Cool. And all the stuff like the competition and the game and stuff like that and all the different caps you can collect. So if you're trying to collect them, feel free to pause that. There you go. And let's see what we actually got. Let's have a look. So we'll start with the Pogs and we'll go to the Slammer at the end. So we've got Boom Boom Boom. Very cool. It's all shiny and very nice. We have um, VWs, I think that says there. Big Deal. And at the back of every one it just says Big Deal Cool Caps. So it's all the numbers. So the different ones. I can't remember how many they were all together. Let's see. It is... 63, I think they're all together. So yeah, another one, very cool. Next one, we have like a big monster truck. Another shiny, really cool one. Nice. And last of all, I think they're all shiny, maybe. We have this one. I remember this one, actually. Maybe I had this one as a kid. Hmm. And the slammer we get is... Oh, it's very cool. Big, A really heavy, thick metal one as well. That's really, really cool. It's like a skull with a backwards cap on. And it's very, very heavy. So yeah, that's very, very cool. So you got some pugs there. And... Nope, that was ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, put them aside and let's open the other packet. So again, we have the flitty thing. I'll leave that. We already looked at it, it's always the same. And we'll see the pugs and the slammer again. So here we go. First up we have, I love you, you love me. Very cool. We have, does that say Dino or Dino? Cool. We have the Pog guy himself, the guy from the front cover. Very cool. And we have Surfbug. They're all kind of car related really, aren't they? There's a lot of vehicles and stuff in these ones. And the Slammer is a guy with a moustache? Guy with a big twirly moustache thing? 
kind of strange looking but again really heavy solid metal and the last packet now let's see what we've got inside hopefully something cool let's have a look oh i've just noticed that that was on the slammer we had before it says what's happening and that is the skull head with the backwards cap very cool next up we have another car <laughs> it says woody and we have another car one so this seems to be pretty much all car type stuff and we have oh we have the slammer we had before which is the mustachio guy and the slammer we got is again the mustachio guy that was in difference nope it's the same one so yeah they all seem like vehicle-y type ones and you can also get the actual milk caps or pogs whatever you want to call them of the slammers you can get too which i'll grab where is it ah oh, there it is so there we go very cool i do like them they're pretty cool but um i don't know i the, my favorite ones were probably i think they were called cool caps or something like that it was something like they were really cool cool caps i know that these ones are cool caps what were they called the ones i had because i used to get horror caps which were very very cool i loved my horror caps and there was another one it was kind of like hot caps like hot caps or something like that i can't remember what they were called but there was loads of different types of pogs and um caps and milk caps they all they were all called different things and obviously there was the official pogs as well but they're very very cool and ugh, i love them so much i don't know why but yeah i really really love them um so yeah that is the big deal cool caps very very cool um probably my favorite out of all of these things i've opened is probably this big slammer with a skull guy on it very very cool and the cap that goes with it's very cool as well so that's that did you have any of these when you were growing up or if you didn't which ones did you have did you have horror caps or any other type of ones i mean there was batman ones there was all sorts of different ones so please let me know which ones you had so thanks for watching everybody like comment subscribe etc and i'll see you on the next one bye okay go and get ready for murray's mail fine but i better have mail for the next show you will boggling could you get the food for our delicious what I left some chocolate over there for the Odd Delicious segment. Uh, you did? Yes. Could you go get it, please? You want me to go get the chocolate you left over there? Yes! Please! Uh, there might be a problem there. And what's that? Well, I kind of edit all. You kind of edit all? I kind of edit all. Yes. <sighs> Why? Uh, I thought it was free food, you know? To keep up morale in the team. So no are delicious today. Do we have any other segments ready? Uh, we have the home video clip ready. Fine. Now it's time for home video clip. Something strange. Something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Something weird, and it don't look good. Who are you gonna call? Not Daniel Lydon with a smelly bum. Murray, are you ready? Uh, not yet. I need more time. <sighs> okay. Flip, do you have a cartoon review ready? Sorry, dude. I'm kind of having trouble with the review. What kind of trouble? Well, I love cartoons, dude, and I, I just can't pick one to review. There are, there are so many. Flip, do you need help doing cartoon reviews? Uh, yeah, dude. Please don't fire me. I love cartoons. Don't worry. I'll help you with the cartoon reviews. We don't have time now, but we'll work together and we'll do some in the future. Wow. Thank you, dude. We will be a super team. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for Murray's Mail. Not yet it's not. Uh, and now it's time for the toy review. Uh, yeah. Good. Time for the toy review.
Hey everybody, welcome to OddPod, I'm Dan and this is a toy review of The Real Ghostbusters Zombie Monster from 1989 by Kenner as part of the Monsters line. So I've already reviewed The Mummy, um, Dracula, um, I'm trying to think of what else I've reviewed. I've reviewed a few of us, um, please check them out, there might be a little link in the corner for one or two of them. And this is The Zombie Monster. So other than the Wolfman, this is probably the other one that I remember the most having as a kid. I really, really like this one. He's very cool. And with all of them, they have a fright kind of feature where you squeeze the legs together. I'll show you that in a minute. But let's take a closer look at him first. So he has he has strange shaped legs. One foot turns that way, one foot turns the other way. Very cool. Um, he has horrible, like, bluish kind of skin. Very zombie-ish skin. And very, very skinny as well. You can see, like, the bones through there and everything. Very cool. And he has just very plain brown raggedy clothes. It looks like there's like some sort of vine that his pants are tied up with. You've got the leaves around the neck. You've got bones, bone necklace. It's very voodoo-ish, I guess you can say. Very voodoo-ish kind of one. I'll get the face as well, actually. There you go. He's got kind of a smiley face. Two teeth popping out there. And his little tuft of hair at the top. And very bright orange eyes. So he's very cool looking. I like the colour of his skin. I like the uh, very plain clothes. Like I said, it's look like something from an old Italian zombie movie. Very plain looking. I like that. So he does have a fright feature. So let's see what it is. You squeeze the legs together and there we go. He pops his arms out to grab you. Very, very cool. And I'll actually show you if I can get him closer to the camera when he does the zoom feature. I'll show you what he does. There you go. His um, brain pops out there. I can't extend his arms fully. <laughs> let's see. There we go. And you can see he's got his like, sort of like brain, half, it's very grey and white, it's like half maybe skull, half brain, I don't know, or like a, just an old rotten brain. But it's very cool and it sort of pops up every time and his eyes move as well. So yeah, he's just wandering around, as soon as he sees you, rawr. So yeah, I really do like the zombie monster, he's just got these plain brown raggedy clothes, like something from an old Italian zombie movie like I said. And he does have the cool feature, and it's in very good condition considering it's like, nearly nearly 30 years old <laughs> uh, so yeah he just does the extension thing his eyes go wandering sideways like he's lost control and he needs to get you Rawr. very very cool it's very I, I can't believe after all these years it's such good um action very good you just see his hair pop off at the top as well it's very very good so yeah he's coming to get you Rawr. so that is the zombie monster from the monsters toy line from the real ghostbusters by kenner in 1989 did you have this guy please let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching everybody hope you enjoyed this like comment subscribe etc and i'll see you on the next one bye Ugh, my stomach hurts well that's because you ate all the chocolate okay i'm ready for murray's mail at last and now it's time for murray's mail Hi guys, welcome to Murray's Mail. <laughs> what? What's that? Sorry? We have to go to a commercial break. Ah, oh, I was just about to read the mail. Who are you talking to? Well, well okay. Pieces. I was really excited to read the mail, but oh well. Sorry guys, it's time for a commercial break. See you soon. It's the real Ghostbusters Firehouse playset. Megman, our firehouse is haunted. No way. The real Ghostbusters each sold separately, uh, assembly required. Hey, buddy, see anything weird? Uh, it's Tombstone Tackle. Uh, Don't lose your head. Take a hike. There's a policeman. Oh, oh no, it's a cop. cop. I can't believe my eyes. Whoa, we're not scared. Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda, and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octorox Tech Tech's levers, too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go Link. Yeah, get Zelda. Awesome. Intense. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Your parents help you hook it up.
Patch is gone. Old Red can't carry on. But Spot Old Blue, he took the Milky Way. Dragon Blaster. One more paralyzing Dragon Blast and... And what? Freeze, Fisto! Dragon Blaster, Skeletor, Fisto, Roboto, and He-Man figures each sold separately. Roboto, attack! Your Dragon Blaster can't stop the most powerful robot in the universe. Oh, yeah! Freeze, Roboto! I said freeze! Dragon Blaster Skeletor, new from the Masters of the Universe collection. Other action figures, each sold separately from Mattel. Hello, Tony. I think we might use a video replay here. Super, Ralph. Let's do that. Yes, we could be in for a quintessential Tango T sensation here. Why, yes, Tony, let's look again. Yes, Ralph, the big orange fellow run in from the left, and he gives him a good old slapping. It just illustrates the bite and buzz. Oh, a real orange is in Tango. Yes, Ralph, super taste sensation, smashing drink, lovely. You know where you've been, Tango. Thanks for watching, Murray's Mayo. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Please send Murray some mail to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. As well as mail, you can also send me pictures. You could draw a cool picture to show me or send a picture from your childhood. Maybe one of you playing with some classic toys or something. Yeah, so send your mail to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. And that's it for this episode of The Odd Pod Show. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. And thank you for taking the time to watch it. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. This room is a mess. Tidy up then. This room belongs to all of us and I think we should all tidy it up. It's not that bad. Not that bad? We have bugs. Hey, how you doing? Oh, that guy? He's cool. The room needs cleaning and we're going to do it today. Well, have fun doing that. I gotta get ready for Murray's mail. I'm sorry, but there'll be no Murray's mail today. We need to sort this room out. What? You can't do this! We can't do anything if the room stays in this condition. Plus you have no mail. Is that true? I, uh, well, yes. Please don't hurt me! Okay team, let's get cleaning. Whilst we get on with tidying this room up, you can enjoy this Lego Odd Pod episode made by Bricktober Films. bit of Egon and Winston right there. There we have Ray. Don't know what he's doing. He's in his pyjamas. Very, very cool.
Well, you're hired. Welcome aboard. He slimed me. If you were stuck on a desert island, what three things would you take with you? That's a tough one. Number one would be a huge crate of Lego so I could build myself a hut. Uh, number two would have to be my favorite Goosebumps book, Say Cheese and Die. It's about a spooky camera and... Oh, sorry. Uh, number three would be a jetpack so I could fly home. Well, that wouldn't make the other two kind of things kind of pointless, but hey, nobody keeps Murray on an island. <laughs> so yeah, let's take a close look. So he is in the grass there. There's a little pokeball behind him. Oh, he's waving at you. Hello. <laughs> There we go, one more time. <laughs> I'll do review on it because it's quite a fun game to play and you get like Charizard ones and stuff. Oh, <laughs> this one we have Kool-Aid Twists. Uh, I reckon we've done, oh, I've done it all wrong. So a pop it in your cup, don't try it until I've yeah, tried it. Oh yeah! But this one is Hard Rock Zombies. It's basically about a band that go to this local town and the town don't like rock and roll and they basically kill the band and the band rise from the grave to play. It's, it's, it's a very weird movie. So what's the big news? I'll tell you in a sec, just waiting for Rat to arrive. I'm so excited, dude! Unless the news is we're all fired. Are we all fired? You can't fire me. I quit. You're not all fired. It's good news. Have you been fired? No, I said it's good news. That would be good news. Okay, I'm here. What's the big news? Oddpod has been nominated YouTuber of the Month. Nominated? So, we haven't won? It's great! I'm so proud of us! Ours! I do all the hard work! What? Oh, this cleaning is hard work. <coughs> That's it! I've had enough! Come on, we'll never get it done if you give up now. I'm very sensitive to dust! And work. I could die! Don't be so... Hey! Where's my rocket lolly? Nom, 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 nom. All this cleaning was making me hungry. I needed that lolly. I was going to review it for our delicious. Oops. Well, it's a good job I already have an delicious already made by Shock16. Who? A fellow YouTuber. Enjoy the delicious. Yo, right, everybody. Shock16 back once again for the. Hang on a minute. This is my channel. This is Oddpod's channel, isn't it? If I'm on Oddpod's channel, then this must mean I'm back once again for another Oddlicious. <laughs> That's right, I have been here before. Last time I was reviewing Pop-Tarts. This time though, I'm not doing Pop-Tarts, as this time I'm reviewing for Oddpod Show and Oddlicious, none other than Lucky Charms. <laughs> They're after me new Lucky Charms again! They're full of magic surprises! Crispy mallow pink hearts, orange stars, yellow moons, white diamonds in this delicious frosted old cereal! Whoa! Got them! Frosted Lucky Charms! They're magically delicious! So yeah, if you don't know what Lucky Charms are, they're an oat-based cereal with marshmallow pieces. So yeah, you guys there in the US have had these since 1964, and you still get them on your shelves nowadays, whereas here in the UK, um, we only had them in the early 90s. I think the AD lasted for about two years, if that. So yeah, I think they came out in about 1992, and yeah, they was probably gone by 1994. So yeah, like I say, about two years, if that. Um, reasons for why they went off our shelves in the UK, many rumours, but I think the one that's legit is that they just didn't sell very well here in the UK, which is quite surprising actually, because I know a lot of kids, well, a lot of people my age now, um, was a fan of Lucky Charms when they first came out, so yeah. So I haven't had these since they came out, so 
yeah, that's a lot of years since I've had <laughs> Lucky Charms. So, yeah, obviously you can now get them again in the UK, but by import only. We have a few import shops as well as our big supermarkets such as like Asda and Tesco and such like that now have a foreign food aisle which you can buy them on as well. Um, but yeah, because they're imports, you will pay import prices. So a box about this size from, say, Tesco or somewhere like that will probably cost you about £5, um, which is a big difference considering that in the US, I think you guys only pay like $4 for a box, which is equal to about £2.70 here. So yeah, a big difference. So yeah, let's just take a look at the packaging. Um, what's different from when they was out here in the UK in 1992? Not a lot. Really, the packaging stayed the same. Really, it's always had like the leprechaun on it. Um, yeah, the Lucky Charms logo still looks the same to me. Um, the rainbow with the pieces and the red background that's how I remember them from back in the day. Obviously, the leprechaun's gone through a few design changes, and yeah, but basically, they look the box is near enough the same. It screams nostalgia, so not much has changed in design, really. Um, the only big thing that I can see that's obviously different here from when we had them in the UK is that these are made by General Mills, um, which I believe was who they've always been by, like originally they was by General Mills in the US obviously, but when we had them in the UK they used to be made by Nestle, so yeah, who make a lot of our cereals here in the UK, so yeah, that's a real big difference about it. Now the other big difference that I can see on it really is that seems to have changed is there's now more marshmallow pieces because I remember from originally here all they had was four marshmallow pieces they had the pink heart the orange star the yellow moon and the white diamond diamond white oh no diamond white oh no that's a totally different <laughs> Diamond White is a totally different nostalgic memory for people in the UK. So yeah, we don't have those anymore. Oh, actually we do actually have two of those. We still have the pink heart, is still there. And we still have the moon, but the moon's now blue. So yeah, what else do we have now? Now, new additions include the rainbow, the shooting star, the hourglass, the leprechaun hat, clover leaf hat thing, um, the balloon, that's supposed to be, a horseshoe, is that it? Yeah, that's it, but yeah, a lot more shapes, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shapes now, so that's double the amount of shapes, imagine that. <laughs> um, so yeah, the only thing to do now is crack them open. Right then folks, so this is what they look like, basically yeah, just um, your oat pieces with your marshmallow pieces in them. Um, yeah, they used to be a little bit scarce on the marshmallows as I remember, but it looks like they've balanced it out a little bit more. Of course you still get a lot more oats than you get marshmallows, but you know, that's how it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, one of the biggest differences that I first noticed though when I opened these up was the colours. The colours of the marshmallow pieces are now a lot more vibrant, they used to be a little bit uh, washed out back in the 90s but yeah you can actually see that they've improved the colours on the marshmallows now but yeah other than that everything still looks the same as it did back then so that's how they look but how do they smell very nice actually very um, sweet yeah it just smells like a big bag of marshmallows you can't smell any of the oaty part whatsoever so yeah it doesn't really smell anything like cereal it just smells like a big bag of marshmallows or candies or sweets or something like that yeah just a very sweet nice smell now of course we've come to the best part the taste but you can't taste them without your milk so let's do this right so here we go one more for good luck Yeah, really, oh, really, really nice. <laughs> They're actually better than I remember them to taste. Back in the day, I remember them being a little bit, like, too sweet or, yeah, a bit sickly and stuff like that. I think they would get sickly if you ate a lot of them, like, all the time, but every now and again, I think these are great. I mean, the oat part, 
just tastes like Cheerios, like, yeah. Yeah, it just tastes like um, Cheerios or something like that. And yeah, you get the sweetness hit of the um, marshmallows, which obviously start off hard and then they go soft due to the milk and then they just dissolve on your tongue. So yeah, taste wise, brilliant, still spot on, just as I remember them to be actually. So all good, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So yeah, now onto my nostalgic memory of Lucky Charms and it actually has to do something with my big sister who sent off tokens from the boxes of Lucky Charms to get herself a free mug. Now if I can find this mug online, there's bound to be somebody on um, Google that's posted up pictures. So if there's any pictures, I'll edit them into this segment. Um, but yeah, she sent off tokens and she got a colour changing mug. Basically it had like a nighttime picture on it and when you added like a hot drink to it, um, it would change colour and give you another picture. So yeah, it was like a heat sensitive kind of colour changing mug thing. And yeah, I can remember we had that mug all the way up into adulthood. Um, yeah, until like probably like we both left home or something. Um, I did actually contact my parents to see if we still had it so I could put it in this video. But yeah, apparently we don't have it any anymore. So it has eventually gone. <laughs> Where it's gone to, I don't know. But yeah, we did have it all the way up into adulthood. And so yeah, there you go. That's my nostalgic memory of Lucky Charms. So there you go guys, that was my Oddlicious review for Lucky Charms. Do you remember Lucky Charms? Did you like Lucky Charms? Have you bought any back in recent years? Do you still eat them? Do you like them? Let us know. I've been Shock16 for Oddlicious on the Odd Pod Show. And these have been Lucky Charms. See you later. The Odd Pod Show will return after the break. Now, it's here. The excitement, the adventure of a new force at breakfast. We'll call them C-3PO's. New C-3PO cereal from Kellogg's. Twin rings, phase together. For two crunches in every double O. A delicious part of this nutritious breakfast. Now you can experience the taste of Kellogg's C-3PO's. A crunchy new force at breakfast. May the force be with you. I do believe this mailbox is addressing me. <laughs> McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> Hamburger. Soft surprise. Oh, regular, regular size. size. Mm. Now that's what I call special delivery. <laughs> <laughs> Skiing, gymnastics. When you buy a McDonald's Good Sports Happy Meal, you get sports games, cutouts, even sports quizzes, plus a surprise inside. Four different Good Sports Happy Meal boxes at participating McDonald's. Let's have a Play-Doh party! Yeah! yeah. <gasps> a shooting star! You can make all sorts of great things with a Play-Doh Fun Factory. I made spaghetti! And now, you can get a Play-Doh Fun Flyer free when you buy Fun Factory and specially marked packages. <laughs> it's lots of fun and little enough to take with you wherever you go. While supplies last, the Play-Doh Fun Factory toy comes with everything you see here. From Kenner. Hey, look what I just found. Oh, cool. Does it work? I don't know. It needs batteries. I'll leave it for now. We need to get on with the cleaning. Well, we could have a quick break to see if it works. Yeah, I guess we could. Okay, time for the home video clip. I've got some batteries for you. Oh, you'll eat anything, won't you? <laughs> oh wow, this is terrible. Yeah, all those electronic tiger games were. Get out. Oh, feels like we've been cleaning for hours.
and it looks exactly the same. Yeah, we didn't really get much done. The bit I cleaned is spotless. Yeah, you did a good job. You! Out! What did I do? Oh well, I guess we'll have to sort the room out another time as it's the end of the show. Thanks for watching everybody, really hope you enjoyed it. It was a great show! Get out! Please send in your mail to Murray, like questions, drawings, childhood photos, nostalgic stories and anything like that to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. And if you don't, I'm going to feed the mailman to my cousin Nash. Ooh, yummy. What? Also, if you love retro game music, check out Odd Pod's Retro Game Music podcast on iTunes, Spreaker and other podcast services. It's a great podcast. I love retro game music. Oh, you. Nash, get him. Yum, yum. <laughs> nah! <sighs> Bye, everyone. Okay, Flip, are you ready for the DuckTales Marathon? Sure am, good buddy. Okay, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to the Odd Pod Show, episode 3. Mr. Murray? Huh? Oh, it's you. What do you want? I have some mail for you. Ha! Huh, not falling for that again. Last time it was just blank pieces of paper. Well, this mail seems to have writing on it. I can throw it away if you want. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see that. No way. Is everything okay, sir? I have mail! I have mail! That's great, Mr. Murray. Dan! Dan! What? I got mail! Yeah, cool. I, I don't think you heard me. I got mail! Yeah, you, you've got the thing. Cool. You, freaky nose guy. It's Brock Cardigan, sir. You have now been officially promoted Art Pod Mailman. Uh, wasn't I already a mailman? No, because you never delivered me any mail. Oh, yeah. Well... Thank you, sir. No problem. Now get out of here. Oh, okay. Right. I gotta go get Ray from Murray's mail. Woohoo! Hey, Dan. Yeah? Do you remember Blobby Vision? Wow. I do remember that. I had Blobby Vision too. I loved it. Yeah. Just popped in my head for some reason. Well, I'm glad it did flip. Let's take a quick break from DuckTales to review Blobby Vision. First of all, if you don't know who Mr Blobby is, then I will explain. Mr Blobby was a popular TV character in the UK in the 90s, mostly known for appearing on the TV show Noel's House Party, starring Noel Edmonds. Some people hated him and some loved him. I loved him. And I hated him. 
He became so popular that he had toys and other merchandise based on him, including free VHS tapes. One of them was Blobby Vision. It was my little sister's video, but I watched it just as much as she did. So what is Blobby Vision? Well basically it's a series of sketches starring Mr Blobby that parodies popular TV shows and other things from the 90s including Blob Watch, based on Baywatch, Could we be born with future Blind Blob, based on Blind Date, it's good, it's good. So could we please have your response, contestant number one. Not on your Nelly. <laughs> Master Blob, based on Mastermind. Mastermind of Crinkly Bottom, and your time starts now. Who is the star of Noel's house party? <laughs> and others, including parodies of popular TV adverts like the Tango advert, except instead of being tangoed, you've been blobbied instead. Let's have another look at that. It looks to me like another blobby moment. What a move! What an idiot! You can tell when you've been blobbied. I thought Blobby Vision was hilarious, buddy. It was silly, weird, and lots of fun. I watched it again recently and it still makes me laugh. I don't know if it's just nostalgia or just because it's so stupid, but I love it. It just it's it's ridiculous, but it still makes me laugh. Is this you? Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. 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 Embarrassed about baldness? <laughs> well, don't be. Get down to the branch of the undetectable wig shop in Crinkly Bottom, and your troubles will be over. <laughs> the undetectable wig. Your friends will notice a difference, but they won't know why. <laughs> Blobby Vision was released in 1994, and I think it's a really well-made, crazy piece of the 90s. So please let us know if you had Blobby Vision and what you thought of Mr. Blobby. If you've never heard of him before, then it's probably a little bit too late to get into him now, because he was very of his time, but yeah, I loved him. Oh, Blobby Hey, should I have had a title card ready for that blobby thing review? What? I said, should I have had a title card ready for that review? Who's doing a review? What? No, no, I said! Never mind. I'll get the other title card ready. Yeah. I love DuckTales. Me too. You think we should have reviewed this instead of Blobby Vision? Nah, we'll get around to it. Sometime. Yeah. Okay guys, it's time for a home video clip. What? Uh, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for the home video clip, and this clip was sent in by Michael Jameson of Food Review UK. 
If you would like to send in a home video clip, then email artpod at artpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. The Artpod Show will be back after the break. Sorry, Anonymous. My son Boris has a missile command problem. My mission in life is to save all of mankind. Lately, my daughter has developed a similar problem with Atari Warlords. <laughs> Now, with video pinball, my husband is acting funny lately. With Atari games so ingenious, so involving, so intense, I ask you, Atari Anonymous, is this problem contagious? The turtles are assaulting the Technodrome! Insider the Foot Clan threatened storage chamber, Krang's laboratory, and Shredder's master control room! Huh? Turtles? Oh, they've been spotted! Now they'll have to watch out for the i spy radar, that hit news pit, the spike back door! Turtle soup time! Oh no, an ooze scanner, a brain scrambler, and mutant manacles! Can Leonardo rescue them? Sure hope so! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! From Playmate! You're looking light all over to me looking good cool. you're looking pepsi light and it's just one calorie looking light looking light looking pepsi light refreshing cause it's lemon light lemon light lemon light lemon pepsi light with this one 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 calorie looking light looking pepsi light hello murray huh oh hi I just heard you got mail. That's great. Yes, it is. It's a good job, really. I was going to cancel Marie's mail if you didn't get any of this episode. Oh, well, I did, so everything is good, right? Yes, it's all good, as long as you keep getting mail. Good luck. Ah, uh, thanks. Hey, Murray, are you ready for Murray's mail? Yep. Just waiting for Dan to introduce it. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's okay. I've got this. Go get in place. I'm on it. Okay, guys. Now it's time for Murray's Mail with your favorite big-headed blue thing, Murray. Murray's Mail. Hey, guys. Welcome to Murray's Mail. <laughs> this is the place where I read out all the cool mail you've sent me. Oh, sorry. Uh, now it's time for Murray's... No, 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 no. We've done that. <sighs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the first letter. This one is from Shock16 and it says, Hi, Murray. A question for you. How do you keep yourself so blue? Any hints, tips, or special products you recommend for anyone else trying to achieve that blue style? Loving the show. All the best. Shock16. Well, first of all, thank you for sending me mail. Okay, so you want to know how I keep myself so blue? Well, let me show you. You're not going to believe this, but this is what I use to keep my hair so clean, healthy, and blue. Matey Bubble Bath! Yes, I know that sounds crazy, but it's great for blue monsters like me. Cookie Monster from Sesame Street once told me about it when I did some work experience on Sesame Street in the 90s. We don't know what it is about the stuff, but it works really well. Mwah. Well, I hope that answers your question, Shaq16. Murray, we're kind of running out of time. Just one more question. Ah, <sighs> fine. Okay, my next and final letter is from Robert, aka Mysterio Tube 123 and he says, Hey dude, huge fan of the show. My daughter Crystal Rose loves Murray, and when I watched she laughs when Murray shows up. She even giggled as I was drawing this. Hope you like it. 
Well, you might have noticed that cool title pic for Murray's Mail at the beginning. That was made by Robert, and I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, and hi, Crystal Rose. Haha, <laughs> glad you are enjoying the show. Okay, we've got to wrap this up. Okay, okay. Well, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to send me any mail or pictures, then send them to artpartshow at hotmail.co.uk. I can't wait to read them. This has been Murray's Mail. <laughs> that was good. Glad you finally got some mail. Thanks. Me too. Hey, Dan, what did you think? What? I did a proper episode of Murray's Mail. Did you like it? Who's got mail? Do I have mail? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Ugh, never mind. Okay, Dan, time to end the show. What? Ugh, time to end the show. Huh? Oh, thanks for watching, everyone. Really hope you enjoyed whatever happened. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at OddPodRetro. You can also join the Facebook group if you search for OddPod on Facebook. If you want to send any messages, including Murray's mail, send them to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. Uh, really appreciate you watching this. Um, can I get back to DuckTales now? Uh, yeah, sure. Can I watch? Okay, cool. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Hey guys, I think today's show went really well. I got mail, didn't get my segment cancelled, and everything just went really well. Great job, guys! What? 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 Never mind. Okay, Rad, it's the Halloween special. What spooky decorations did you manage to get? Well, with the budget for the show being what it is, we had enough money for a sound. A sound? A spooky Halloween sound. Okay, let's hear it. That's it? Yes. Alright, let me hear it again. I can't. We could only afford to play it once. So we wasted the spooky sound. Is that it? What about spooky lighting? I had to sell the light box that does the spooky light in order to get the spooky sound. <sighs> so what you're saying is we have nothing Halloween-y for the Halloween special? Yes, but I'm sure the segments in the show will be nice and spooky. Well, we'll try. Good luck. I'll watch the show when it's finished and evaluate it. Yeah, thanks. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Odd Pod Show, episode four, the Halloween special. Hey, dude. Sorry I'm late. Ah, it's okay, but... Ah! <laughs> really cool. Flip, where are the other guys? The Baglin and Murray are out trick-or-treating, dude. Oh, I guess it's just me and you then. Yeah. You're going trick-or-treating, aren't you? No, no, I'm staying here. Go have fun, Flip. Happy Halloween. Thanks, buddy. Well, I guess it's just me then. Okay, everyone, now it's time for the toy review. Enjoy. Frankenstein Monster from the Monsters line of the real Ghostbusters, made by Kenner in 1989. Yes, I have reviewed um, the Quasimodo, the Zombie, the Vampire, all of them except for the Frankenstein Monster. So this is the last one to review from the Monsters line. And I love the Monsters line. I love the, the loosely based on except for one, which is um, the Zombie. Um, they're loosely based on the Universal Monsters. I kind of wish there was like a Creature from the Black Lagoon-ish one, but oh well. But yeah, this is the Frankenstein Monster. Um, unfortunately, the <laughs> all the other ones um, are in reasonable condition. This guy's a little bit more, um, yeah. <laughs> but he's still there, he's still okay. The paint's still fine, but you'll see in a minute that he's not, yeah, he's, he's getting on a bit. <laughs> So let's have a look at him. So he's got a swanky little jacket on there. He looks very nice. He's got the typical Frankenstein monster green skin. He's got the bolts in the head. The um, he's got a weird haircut. Actually, it's kind of like a um, I don't know, like a punk haircut. <laughs> it's all bald around instead of the top bit. It's got like a uh, what do you call that? Can we call that now? What punks have? I don't know. <laughs> 
And he's just got like a little bit of hair going round, and you can see like scars, stuff like that on his hair. Very cool. But yeah, his clothes aren't that raggedy, really. They look all right. It looks like he's wearing a swanky suit. Let's go into a job interview or something. Oh, he's got one patch on his um on his side there, but that's all right. I'm sure he'll get the job. Uh, the back. Oh, it's all stitched up at the back. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, he looks good. He looks cool. So with all the monsters, um, they have an action feature. And yep, usually you squeeze the legs together and they do it. Um, I'm hoping this guy's going to do it <laughs> this time. But um, when I tried it out before, he yeah, it wasn't going too well. So let's see. So squeeze the legs together and... Oh, he did it. So his mouth opens. And yeah, his arm's not going out fully, but it's all right. So yeah, like he's chasing you. Mm. Ah, that's the noise he, um, Boris Karloff made in the uh, <laughs> in the original Frankenstein. Ah. But yeah, so his arms, you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear the spring. Let's see if I can get it close to the mic. Can you hear that? Oh, and his arms flipped back. <laughs> so yeah, the spring's sort of gone a bit. And yeah, when I do it, it's not bad. But after a while, he's, this, this, this arm starts to go a bit. Yeah, let's see. Oh well, at least it's still working, I can show you, but I will try and get a better one in the future just for my personal collection because, you know, I want them, you know, actually work well and... Ah, oh, see, you know, he's asking going <laughs> Oh well. But let's look at the hands. So he's got that kind of um, pose with that one. More just normal there. So yeah, it looks like he's sort of reaching out to you and he wants to get you. But yeah, and he's got his um, open mouth as well. It's very nice and his eyes look kind of... You know, he looks sad and the eyes look a bit, oh, dead, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, but he's, he's very cool. I don't have that many memories of playing with this guy as a kid. I'm pretty sure I did have him. I'm pretty sure I had all the monsters, but yeah, I don't have like proper fond memories of playing with this guy that much, really. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But yeah, he's still cool, though. I do like the look of him and everything, but he wasn't my favorite. But if, if he was one of your favorites, please comment below and let me know. So, yeah, I have done all of the monsters from the real Ghostbusters monster line from 1989. And I really, 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 really do love them a lot. Absolutely brilliant. Like I said, I wish there was a creature from the Black Lagoon one and maybe some other kind of monsters as well. But, you know, there's plenty of ghosts and ghouls and stuff in the Ghostbusters toy line. But yeah, just one of my faves, though. Ugh, oh, his arm's gone. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, they are old, aren't they? But yeah, he's very cool. I do love the um, the Frankenstein monster. So I do another little action. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Frank. Sorry, Frank. You might not get the job after all. But yeah, so that is the Frankenstein monster from the monsters, um, the real Ghostbusters line from 1989 made by Kenner. Really hope you enjoyed this and please comment below. Let me know if you had this guy and let me know what your favorite monster was from the monsters line too. Mine was the Wolfman. Uh, so yeah, let me know what yours was and let me know if you've got any memories of this guy. Even with the lights on, it's kind of creepy being on my own hair. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's you. Brock, right? Yes, Brock Cardigan, sir. <sighs> what do you want? I have mail for Mr. Murray, but I can't find him. Everyone's out trick-or-treating, so no Murray's mail today. You can bring it to him next time. Oh, okay. Hey, since you're here, would you like to introduce the next segment? <gasps> wow, really? Yeah, it's an Oddalicious by Joe Grotesque from Retro Cynical. Okay, hey you people there. Now it's time for the Oddalicious show with Jim Grotesque from Let's Go Serial. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, that was fun. Okay, gotta get back to work. Enjoy the odd delicious, everyone. Hey kids, it's Joe Grotesque from Retro Cynical and Generation Rad right here on YouTube. It's a bit of an American tradition to partake in the delicacy that is General Mills Monster Cereals. Someone's come for a nutritious breakfast. What? Hello, my name is Boo. <laughs> Let me finish. Booberry, my ghostly good blueberry flavored cereal, Booberry, <laughs> is part of this complete breakfast. 
Frankenberry's got strawberry flavored marshmallows. How chocolate got chocolate marshmallows? But I've got blueberry flavored marshmallows. Frankenberry. How chocolate? And blueberry. <laughs> there was Count Chocula, who was an obvious parody of Count Dracula. His cereal had a delicious chocolatey taste. Frankenberry was a parody of Frankenstein's monster, and his cereal had a delicious strawberry taste. Then a little later on came Boo Berry, my personal favorite, who had a delicious blueberry taste and was a ghost. A little later on, we got Fruit Brute, who was a werewolf that had a pretty tasty fruity mix cereal. Even later on was Yummy Mummy, who had a similar taste. These two were the obscure misfits of the bunch. Now these seasonal Halloween cereals have been gracing the mouths of the American public since the early 1970s. I was born in the early 80s, so I missed out on Fruit Brute. So I managed to procure two modern boxes, one box of Count Chocula and one box of Frankenberry, who both seem to be spoofing the current presidential election. Now if I had the third party candidate, I'd be a real happy camper. I realize that it's inappropriate to talk with your mouth full, so I've decided to do this entire review using my powers of telepathy. Now first we have Count Chocula. We're gonna see how this smells. Just get the box open here. Tear that bag open. Ah, it's a very sweet cocoa smell. Now let's see how it tastes. I can't wait. Oh, it's just like a chocolate flavor explosion in your mouth with different marshmallow flavors. Now that's good. Nice and crispy. This is what it looks like when you chew it up. Now let's see how Frankenberry smells. Ah, gotta get this thing open here. Mmm, has a very potent strawberry scent. Now let's get this in my belly. I think I'm even more excited about this one. That's like a sugar disco inside my mouth. The strawberry flavor and the marshmallows just have you coming back for more, what can I say? And this is what Frankenberry looks like in your mouth. General Mills Monster Cereals, what can I say? They're all pretty awesome. Oddpod will return after the break. Can Spooky Wookie make milk shake? Do apples crumble before they're enough? Do eggs scramble when they see the Afinky Saurus? Of course not, St. Ivel fiendish feet are far too good to be bad. Oh. 
It was late one night in the castle of the Chicken McNuggets. What are you making? Sauce. We're using my mummy's recipe. Mummy? Oh, uh, oh. Uh. This better be good. It'll be great. Hmm, does your daddy have a recipe? <laughs> They went to Cancun. We went to your brothers in Poughkeepsie. This Halloween, find Monster Game pieces in Pepsi products and Doritos brand tortilla chips. The right match can win you thousands of prizes, up to a million dollars. Look for specially marked packages. It could change your life for good. You never take out the garbage. Play Pepsi Doritos Monster Match for Monster Money. Frank! Count Micro Machine Man here. I live for the night, so I carry my own light. Micro lights. Touch them like slow. They really glow, but that's not all. Try these amazing Micro Machines light to sound vehicles. They come with a mighty mini building. Have a real glowing emergency lights and make two sounds. Check out these super micro lights with lights that glow and passengers to go. Where do you play with this light and sound show? The Combat City playset. There's a happening heliport, military lift, pivoting gun turret, and fantastic firing rocket. But look out. In case of a real emergency, get the Emergency City playset. There's the fabulous White House, ambulance station, rear ramps, and helipad. Micro lights, lighted sound vehicles, super micro lights, and playsets. Each sold separately from Galoob. Remember, if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. This is a toy review of the Tiger Electronics Goosebumps Haunted Headstone game from 1996. Never had this as a kid, never saw it either. It looks interesting though, and quite scarily, I've not even tried this out. <laughs> so I'm hoping it works, but yeah, it is from Tiger Electronic Games, who make the LCD games as well, but this is more of a... I'm guessing it's like um, Simon Says, where they make a noise and you got to press it. That's what I'm guessing it is. But yeah, it's the Haunted Headstone game from 1996. So, yeah, let's try it. It's got the on switch there, so let's see what it does. Well, okay, so we have game one, game two, repeat game and replay. So let's try game one, I guess. So do I have to guess it? I'm guessing it's a mummy for a crypt. Right then? <laughs> Nothing else happened until I press that again? I'll press game one maybe? Okay, I'm guessing it's him. I'm guessing that's that. Okay, guessing it's that then. Okay. <laughs> what? I don't get it. So, do I press game two maybe? What? So... Okay, so that's him. Okay, that's him. Okay, that's that. I don't get it. I don't get what's going on. Alright, let's turn it off. <laughs> let's turn it back on again. Right. Let's make loads of noises. Okay, so we press game two this time. I'm guessing that's that. So I got that right? It sounded like that was the kind of noise that you got it right. So now I try game one. So that's that. Then I try game one again. And that's that. It's the same thing! I don't get it! Game two? So I'm guessing that's him? <laughs> I'm guessing that's him. Or maybe him. <laughs> I'm so confused! I, I, I don't get it! <laughs> There's no explanation or anything! It's just making noises at me! Right, let's turn it off and on again. One more time. Okay. So is that what I've got to guess? Like... But, what's that? And that. And that's that.
Oh, I don't know. Did I get that right? Did I get it wrong? Did I just replay the game? Did I... Re <laughs> well, it's pretty looking. Let's have a look at this. Turn off. Let's have a look at it then. So, yeah, you've got the um, the heads. They're, sort of, they're like little buttons that you click in and stuff. And they're really nicely moulded. They look very nice. You've got the mummy. you got the... Um, is that the one? The monster from Horrorland? I think that's the main... I always see him on the front cover of... Um, I don't know if he's actually from one of the books. I just remember him being like the kind of like the mascot for Goosebumps. He was on um, he was a special edition book I had. He was on the front, and that's from the hamster from Monster Blood. But um, but the actual game, like I said, it's very nice looking. I really like the look of it and everything. But I'm very confused. Maybe someone in the comments could actually tell me whether I was doing it right or wrong. Maybe I had this as a kid. But I was just confused. I wouldn't mind if they lit up and told you what order. You know, kind of thing like Simon's that Simon game, but. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was just a very confusing game, but it's a very nice looking game. So, yeah, that was <laughs> the Tiger Electronics Goosebumps Haunted Headstone game from 1996. Well, that's it for this year's Odd Pod Halloween special. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hmm, weird. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, we really do appreciate it. You can follow us on Twitter at OddPodRetro and also help support the channel and improve it by checking out our Patreon page, that is patreon.com slash oddpodshow. It will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, like, comment, subscribe, etc. And BOOM! Oh. Oh. What you doing? Hey Murray, just sorting through some toys. Be careful, don't stand at any. I won't. Oh, hey everybody, welcome to the Odd Pod Show, episode 5. It should be a good one, so sit back and enjoy. Really cool. You ready for a toy review? Not yet, I'm just looking for a toy to review now. Hey, how about that one? What was that? Uh oh. It was nothing! The floor is just... crunchy. Murray, what was it? Ah, uh, it's a Ninja Turtles crime kit thing or something. It looks cheap, don't worry. Well, at least it's not an expensive toy, but still, be careful, Murray. Maybe you shouldn't be throwing toys all over the room. Well, shut up. Well, the packaging on this is open now, so I guess I could review this. Really? Yeah, why not? We all had one of these kits back in the day. Yeah, I'm going to review it. Okay, cool. Flip, get the toy review title card ready. Sure a thing, good buddy. Okay, now it's time for the toy review. This is a toy review of the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles Crime Fighter set. Uh, yes, you can tell it's British because it's Hero Turtles and not Ninja. So you probably had one of these as a kid. Maybe it was a sheriff set, maybe it was a police set, but we all had one of these as a kid. This one just happens to have the turtles plastered on it. So let's have a look at the content. So at the front of the box it says help the turtles fight crime. And inside you get handcuffs, a play watch, a compass, clip on silver, badge, uh, whistle and storage pouch because every time I think of the turtles the first thing that comes to my mind is handcuffs <laughs> and a silver sheriff badge so let's have a look at the content so we'll go with the play watch first oh play watch I think it's slash compass to say there yeah play watch play watch sorry slash compass um oh well, yeah very plasticky plastic <laughs> kind of hard I wonder if I can no yeah <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder if I can get them on my little dainty wrists, but not a chance. Um, I'm not sure if that is an actual compass, because, yeah, I know it's just a picture. 
it's got Raphael, but it's just it's not a compass. Oh, I guess it's a play compass, because um, yeah, there is literally there's no there's something shaking inside though. Where is that? Oh, I can. It's the cardboard. <laughs> I thought there was going to be something inside, but yeah, it's just a piece of cardboard uh, that shows a picture of a compass, but it's not actually a compass. Yeah, these um, sets back in the... I guess they've been going since the 80s, these kind of sheriff cop sets and stuff. Um, they were very cheap. They usually found them in the like the cheap toy aisle bargain bins at market stalls and things like that. They were very, very cheap, and they still even do them today in like um, the pound shops and stuff like that, and cheap dollar stores and things. But um, yeah, that's the... Play watch slash non compass thing. Right, next up we have. Why is this? Uh, it is a adjustable belt. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to unravel the whole thing. You know what a belt looks like. It's very cheap plastic. It looks like one of those sweets, actually. Those um, strawberry, not strawberry laces. I can't remember what they're called now. You know what I mean? Bootstraps are they called? Strawberry bootstraps or something? It's just a belt. It's just a cheap. I don't get what what's totally about that, but yeah, okay. Next up we have... Oh, we have the whistle. Because that's what the Ninja Turtles always use when they're in trouble. A little whistle. Does it actually work? <whistles> oh, it does. Yep. <whistles> See if we can do the Ninja Turtles theme on it. There you go. <whistles> Did that sound anything like the Ninja Turtles theme? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's not even got a turtle sticker on it. That's kind of lazy, really, isn't it? You'd think at least they'd put some sort of Ninja Turtle... Oh, maybe at the side there. Little ninja... No, nothing. Right, next we have... We have the... Oh, it's a sheriff badge, isn't it? This one, those little slide clip-on ones. Um, it's nice looking. It's pretty much... It's got the... Um, it's got Raphael again, but I'm not sure if that is even Raphael. It might just be like... Because it looks like the old comic book um, thing. And they all had red bandanas back then. So maybe it's just... Any of the turtles, I don't know. Because each one has had oh, that one as well. Raphael. So maybe it is just all the turtles, but they're just using the old comic? I really don't know. I don't care. But yeah, it's it's a sheriff badge. It would have either police written on it or sheriff or something, but this one has a ninja turtle. And um, it's nice enough, I guess. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this pack is from 1989. I just thought I'd add. All right, that's fun. Next we have the storage pouch. That's a bit better. It's got 1989 Mirage Studios. Um, can you actually close that? How do you? There's two little slits there. How do you actually? So you just close it like that? Oh, I guess so. Oh, that's where the belt comes in. The belt goes through these slits here, doesn't it? And then you put it on the side. Ah, okay, belt makes sense now. I thought it was literally a belt to hold your pants up. Nope, it's a belt to pop this pouch on. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, it can hold a few things. I think it can hold. You know, you can put, oh, you don't. You won't pop the badge in there, but you can put your whistle in there. And I don't know why you'd put a watch in there, but yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's all right, I guess. So it's quite nice. At least it's got um, an actual. Turtles logo on it, so that's not bad. It's okay. And last of all, very oh geez, very very flimsy. <laughs> geez, even a fly could snap out of that. You should. <laughs> that's yeah, it's the wobbliest, thinnest plastic ever. I'm not. I don't want to pull that. That's gonna snap. And um, do they actually lock in? Oh, they do. Well, you can just pull them out. But um, yeah, that is. Some turtles handcuffs there, because, you know, they are, they're always using handcuffs and whistles. Uh, right, I'm just going to... There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, these these were good when you were a kid. You know, you got about an hour of fun out of them. Then they'd all break, and you wouldn't really care, because they were a bit rubbish. Anything on the back? No. Um, we've got some turtles imagery at the front there. Crime fighter set, help the turtles fight crime. Oh, so you're pretty much just helping the turtles. Oh, so this is like, I guess it's not what the turtles would use, but what you would use to help the turtles? I don't know. But 
yeah, it it's all right. And like I said, it's pretty much something I'm I'm pretty sure at least ninety percent of you all had a kit like this in some form. Maybe not turtles. Maybe you know sheriff, police, SWAT team, anything like that. Please let me know which one you had in the comments below, by the way. But yeah, we all had one. Maybe you did have the turtles one. But we all had one of these back in the day. Um, they were a bit rubbish. <laughs> but they were cheap, so that's all right, isn't it? So that was my review of the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles Crime Fighter set. Mr. Murray, I have more mail for you. Ha! <laughs> of course you do. I'm a superstar. Uh, yeah. Here you go. Thank you. Go away. Oh! Mwah! <sighs> Home video clip next? Yeah, it's one of mine today. Okay, right, now it's time for the home video clip. If you want to send in a home video clip, send it to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. Oddpod will be back after the break. Who gives you raging arcade gameplay? Who gives you the most authentic sports games? Who gives you a game that lets you fly? And who gives you access to the internet on your TV? Sega! Play games, surf the net, only on Sega Saturn. Sega! Reload! Reload! Makers of waffles and alphabites come new potato funny faces. Crisp golden slices made with real mashed potato with no artificial flavors or colors. Mommy, you daddy. Very good, darling. New Potato Funny Faces from the Bird's Eye Potato Family. In the morning, when you stare at your reflection, it seems to say you need Aqua Fresh protection. So don't be a chump. Reach for the bomb. Aqua Fresh. Aqua Fresh has three stripes to help fight tooth decay, gum disease, and plaque, giving your family three in one protection. Brush, brush. Get down to the with the pump, pump. Get the right stuff to give up. It gives you a buzz when you know what it does. There are some things in life that don't seem like a good idea. Until you try them. Take QT, for example. It's an instant white tea. So there's no need to add milk. And when you try it, we think you'll like it. QT, instant white tea from Typhoon. Try it. You might like it. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, that looks just like a quaver. Hey, this one, this one smells like a quaver. I wonder if they taste like quavers. They are quavers. <laughs> quavers, watch out, they taste girly. Okay, now it's time for Murray's Mail. Murray's Mail. Hey guys, welcome to Murray's Mail. The place where I read out all the cool mail you great people send me. Okay, let's get straight to the first letter. This one is from Arthur from Pocket Rocket Radio, and he says, 
Hey guys, drew my childhood like you asked. Well, I don't know what to say. What a lovely picture. Really shows what a great childhood you had. I... I hope you're okay. Okay, my next letter is from Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and he says, What is your favorite old-fashioned candy from when you were a child? Hmm, that's a tough one. I liked a lot, but if I had to pick, I would go for Gobstoppers, also known as Jawbreakers, the really large ones. If you haven't noticed, I have a big mouth. Oh, we all know that. Shut up. Yes, I have a big mouth, so the Gobstoppers were a perfect size for me. They were cheap, and it would take a long time to shrink down in size, so I could chew and swallow it. They were too big for me, and they didn't really taste nice. Well, nobody asked you. Anyway, yes, big jawbreakers slash gobstoppers were my fave when I was a little monster. Okay, time to wrap it up. Fine. Well, that's it for today's Murray's Mail. If you want to send me a letter or a picture, then email me at artpartshow at hotmail.co.uk. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! And that's it for this episode of The Odd Pod Show. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to follow us on Twitter, you can at OddPodRetro. You can also check our Patreon page if you'd like to support and improve the channel. It's patreon.com slash oddpodshow. And you can also join our Facebook group and chat to other nostalgia lovers. And just for, search for OddPod on Facebook or you can check the link in the description below. We also have an Instagram, at OddPodRetro. Oh yeah! Thanks for watching everybody, we really do appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye! Hey, Dan. Oh. You finished oogling at girly pictures and ready to start the show? I wasn't oogling girly pictures. I was doing... research. Research. Yeah. I was! This year is the 20th anniversary of their debut song, Wannabe. Hey, Dan. You still oogling girly pictures? I wasn't oogling girly pictures. It was research. Well, it's time to start the show. You can oogle the pictures later. I wasn't... Hey everybody, welcome to the Odd Pod Show, episode 6. Really cool. Murray, were you a Spice Girls fan? Ha! No. I liked maybe one song. Well, well, two songs, but... Well, three songs, but no more than that. Well, well, there's that fourth one. Well, four... Oh, fine. Yeah, I liked them. My sister really liked them. I liked one song. Well, maybe maybe two. Like, three, three songs, but... Yeah, I kind of liked them. What wasn't to like? They were cute and the songs were catchy. I wasn't like a huge fan or anything, but they had some catchy songs and the Spice Girls craze swept the world. dolls are almost the finished product but sporty baby ginger scary and posh won't be on our shelves until the middle of December by then the hype will be enormous Ends, boxes there's even something for organized spice 
launch date of the £20 Spice Dolls is deliberate. It's hype. Um, nothing looks better in tabloids than queues and queues of people and distraught children outside toy shops. It looks great, it fuels the hype, it's stoking the fire around Christmas. They want everybody to go out, be buying the merchandise, the single, going out to see the film. This is the perfect way to do it. Didn't you tell me you had a poster of them in their underwear on your wall? <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that must have been someone else. No, I'm sure it was you. Anyway, now it's time for temporary blindness. Enjoy. Yes, this year is the 20th anniversary of the Spice Girls debut song, Wannabe. So I thought I would open some of these Spice World photographs. These were sent to me by Lost Shark Nostalgia Center. I will leave a link to his channel down below. It's a great channel full of, well, nostalgia. So yeah, he sent me these, so I thought I would check them out. I'm pretty sure my cousin and my sister used to have some of these. And I think even I got some of these. Um, back in the day where the Spice Girls craze was at its height. But these are official Spice World photographs and these are promo ones. $1.95? These were sent from New Zealand, I think. So these might be the New Zealand ones. Ah, something like that. But yeah, you get four photographs, a hundred to collect, win thousands of prizes, concert tickets, plus a chance to meet the girls. Wouldn't it be so funny if one of these <laughs> was one of the winning ones? Um, so yeah, just a little bit of... Um, or you can get a photo album, stuff like that. But I'm sure I, I'm, there was loads of Spice Girl stuff back in the day, so I'm not sure if it was these or something else, but I remember actually going to a newsagent's and buying, I think they were like photographs and some of them were autographed or something like that, but I don't know if it was these ones, so I guess I'll find out when I open them. So let's open the first one. So, oh, we've got actually a little tear there, so I might as well start from there. So here we go, let's see what these are like. Da -da -da -da. Oh god, okay. So they've been sealed. <laughs> Close that side. They have been sealed for a number of years. And yeah, kind of just... Yeah, they've kind of stuck <laughs> to, the, to the actual um, packaging there. So I'll, I'll do my best not to ruin all of them, but the top ones might get a little bit um, ruined, maybe. Oh, I can get that up. That's not too bad. There we go, that's not too bad. So let's have a look. So first one we have is posh, sporty, and baby in tour bus or a plane. Okay. Oh God, they're very, um, very floppy. I remember these being like proper photographs, a bit more hard than that. I'm sure they had stuff on the back. So maybe because these are promo ones, so maybe that's why they, they weren't officially released yet. So these are just promotional ones to show you what they would be like, maybe. There's some writing down, I think it's just Spice Girls stuff. Yeah, Regis trademark and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, maybe that's why they're all thin and floppy because these are promotional ones. I don't know. Please comment below, let me know if the official ones were this flimsy. But yeah, they're very... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that one. They look quite terrified. This looks like they're on a plane, actually. Maybe a private jet. Next one we have... Looks like a holiday snap. <laughs> oh, I do remember these being like uh, actual proper photos, just like holiday snaps and other things. And some of them were like on stage and stuff like that, but some of them were just random places. So yeah, here is um, Ginger or Jerry and Baby. Lovely, lovely. And yeah, they're in the Bahamas or somewhere like that. Yeah. Next one. Ah, see, I told you they were like autographed ones. There we go. We've got Mel C. I don't think that's, yeah, it's Mel C, isn't it? Or uh, Sporty. And yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, Melanie C, just say that. So yeah, there's her looking all sporty. <laughs> uh, we've got one more, and that is Scary. Mel B looking scary. Um, it's quite nice with the black and white thingy, actually. It's really nice. Um, I do kind of recognise these then, so I think these were the ones I got as a kid in the news agents and stuff. You know, because they are, they are lovely ladies, and I was a little boy. But, um, right. <laughs> next one. Uh, let's open this. Da, da, da. Hopefully I won't wreck anything. Oh, it looks like we've got a double already. Maybe they're all the same. Maybe that's why they're promotional, just to show you a few of them. I guess we'll find out in a minute. Oh, God, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So just do that. Okay, so let's see if they are all the same. So... Yeah, we've got that one again. Oh, no, they're not. There we go. So we've got Victoria. There we go, Posh Spice. We've got another one of the whole gang. Lovely. And we've got one of them all in bed. <laughs> okay, is that from 
maybe no it's not my phone music but maybe the movie was the movie even out when these ones came out what are these dated at? let's have a look at the back oh it doesn't say it just says no reproduction of this photo may take place blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah I, I don't know what that's from maybe it's just a random maybe it's just for this maybe they did do photos specifically just for these actual collectibles so let's have a look at the next lot hopefully I won't wreck any oh god they really are stuck <laughs> There we go. I'll try not to. We've got a double again. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. It's a bit ruined that one, but it's the uh, Victoria Beckham one again. Oh, and we've got another double. It's the group and the bed. <laughs> So a lot of doubles. I guess there are only a hundred to collect and you get four in each one, so you would get doubles. And then we've got Baby Spice. Looking all sweet and innocent on steps of something, somewhere. I don't know. But yeah, looks like she's in another country anyway. And we have one more pack to open. Are they going to be full of doubles? I can't believe we've got <laughs> this many doubles. So let's have a look. Let's see if we've got doubles. Oh god, if I can get it off the... Ah, there we go. Let's see. Okay. Da, 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 da. Time to find out. Oh no, first one isn't a double. It's baby and she's doing a makeup, maybe? On a tour bus. They do, I like I like the fact that some of them do look like just normal photos the girls have took together kind of thing. It, it makes it a bit more personal and nice like that. But yeah, it's just a random one, baby spice put on makeup on. Uh this one, I take it, someone, they're actually getting proper photo shoot there, and someone just from the side is taking a photo of that for some reason. <laughs> I guess, that's, that's my guess. Uh, it's looks like a proper promotional one. Yeah. So we've got all the gang there. Lovely. And the last one, was this a double? We had this one? Uh, let's have a look. It looks familiar. Um, da, 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 da. No, no. It must be from that photo shoot, though. Yeah, it's got to be from that photo shoot. Uh, no, I don't think we have had this one, actually. Uh, no, I thought I recognised. Maybe it's just because of that other one. It looks very similar to that one. So, yeah, and there's the last one of the gang. So, yeah, I do re remember these. I'm sure my cousin got them. I'm sure some of you's got them, maybe your sisters and stuff. And, yeah, even I bought some of these. The Spice Girls craze was pretty much like the, the Beatles um, craze. It's just everyone loved them suddenly, and they did have catchy songs. I'm not going to uh, shy away from that. They had catchy songs. They were cute. What's not to like? <laughs> so, yeah, that was the Spice Girls, or Spice World, as they say. Spice World photographs, and four photographs in each one, and a hundred to collect. Did you have these? Where is that mail guy? I'm here, sir. What took you so long? Ah. Uh, Never mind. Mail, please. Here you go, Mr. Murray. Hmm. Only one letter today. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sure more will come soon. Of course more will come soon. Of course. Aren't you forgetting something? Uh, what's that, sir? You're forgetting to go away. Huh? Oh! Well, it's just one letter, but it's better than none. Now it's time for the Retro Game Review, brought to you by Marcus from Retro Game Players. Thank you, Dan. Marcus with Retro Game Players. I'm talking about TNC Surf Designs today. This is a pretty crazy game. It's actually based off a company that makes surfboards uh, called Town & Country Surf Designs. And they're actually originally from Hawaii. Like in the early 70s, that's what they did. They made surfboards. And then sometime in the 80s, they came out with these cool mascots, including Thrilla Gorilla, who's the subject of the sequel on Nintendo. Uh, and also this crazy party dude, this other crazy party looking dude with a tiki mask. And then there's a cat in a tuxedo, which he's not on the box, but that's always awesome. So anyway, yeah, what's really weird is this game was developed by Atlas. And what's maybe even weirder is it was released uh, by LJN. So it's a pretty bizarre combo. But the game itself, um, back in the day, I thought was amazing. Uh, when I was a kid, surfing was really awesome. Uh, skateboarding is really awesome. So when you combine those two elements, any game like that was really cool. Like even that uh, California games, that was a pretty fun game. And anyway, that kind of stuff was really cool back then. And this game was really fun back in the day. 
Today, I'd say it's kind of frustrating. It's not really elaborate as far as the gameplay goes because there's really only two modes and there's different levels sort of, but they're really the same thing. But yeah, it's just a really weird relic. What's also weird is I like find so many copies of this game out there. I mean, it's like all the time, like you'll come across an NES lot and there'll just be like three of these in there. And I, I don't know why, but when I was a kid, I would have loved to have a copy but I just could rent mine, that's what I did. So anyway, let's check out the uh, gameplay. So right off the bat, we're greeted by some sweet sounds of the surf at the title screen. And there it is, LGN Toys. But yeah, you basically have three different modes of gameplay. You've got the skating, the surfing, and then a combo of the two where it alternates. So we're just gonna go right into the uh, skate session first. You can pick your guy. On the skate session, you have two different choices, and on the surfing, you have two different choices. So as you're skating along, you can jump, uh, or ollie, you can jump off your board, and then you can also go for these crazy jumps that are, you know, around the level. Uh, you want to grab these coins if you can, and it can actually be pretty challenging, and to be honest, this is pretty much the best part of the game. This is like... At least when I was a kid, this is the part that I always played. I mean, the surfing is so tough. So this, you can actually kind of get down. And, uh, like, there's an awesome jump right there that I just pulled off. So as you wrap up the level, you kind of get to this area where it kind of clears up a little bit, which is nice. And then there's the finish line. And you'll see I actually have more life than I started with, which is cool, because as you do different tricks and jumps you can earn more life, which I think is a really fun thing. You'll also notice that the high score is 10,000. I've got about 45, 90. And uh, yeah, it's pretty tough to get to over 10,000 actually. So that's my goal here, but I'm not doing so hot. But yeah, the skating is awesome. It just, just kind of keeps going like this. It just gets harder every level that you pass. And then, so here's the surfing. You've got your cat first which is really cool. The cat in the tuxedo is one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen in a uh, NES game. Pretty much like the James Bond cat. Uh, the other mascot is Thrilla Gorilla, which is this guy right here. Now, as far as the surfing gameplay, it's freaking tough. Basically, the whole time, you're kind of being pushed either down toward the bottom or back toward the big wave to the left. And what you're trying to do is you could do tricks and get points, um, or you can try and finish the mission, which is off to the right. And you just got to keep going to the right to get to it. But you gain points by staying inside this dangerous area right there. Every second that you're in there, I think you get 100 points. You can also do a trick where you kind of shoot off the top of the wave, but that's pretty tough to do. And there's bananas that pop up in the water. But here's the end. This is the actual end of that first level. So it tallies it up, gives you a thousand points, which is cool. And then you get a chance to kind of run it again, except this time it's level two. And again, it's kind of, uh, gets harder. You know, there's just more obstacles. I could barely stay on the surfboard when I was a kid, let alone deal with the obstacles. I mean, it was like constantly a struggle to try and get past level one of the surfing let alone level two, which I just did right here. I could never get past level two when I was a kid, so that made my day. But anyway, this game's great. Definitely worth it for just the skating sessions alone. And that does it for TNC Surf Designs on the Nintendo later on. Hello, Dan. Hey, Rod. How's the Christmas special coming along? Uh, the what now? Well, it's Christmas. You should be doing a Christmas special. Well, I, uh, well, of course this is a Christmas special. It doesn't look very Christmassy. Well, just take a look at this Christmassy video made by Joe from Retro Cynical. Well, hey, kids, it's your old pal, Drunken Santa. Ho, ho, ho. <coughs> <coughs> well, that's a stout Christmas cider. Anyway... It was the mid-80s, and it seemed like every boy in America wanted to get their hands on Mad Balls. A little company called Amtoy put them out, and I distributed them throughout the world. Mad Ball, Mad Ball.
Mad Balls. Mad Balls. Mad Balls. Gross for one. Gross for all. We play with a Mad Ball. They're gross. Funny. Yucky. Sick. Mad There's ball. eight. So you can take your pick. Mm -hmm. We throw. Catch. It's uh-oh fun. There's so much gross in every one. Gross. Freaky fun is what they're for. Mad so ball. much ugly. So much more. Gross for one. Gross for all. We play with a Mad Ball. Mad ball. We play with a Mad Ball. Mad we ball. play with a Mad Ball. Mad Ball. Mad ball. Mad ball. Freaky fun for everyone, sold separately from Amtoy. Mad Ball. Oh. Oh. Anyway, here's Joe Grotesque from Retro Cynical to share some of his Mad Balls collection with you. Now, these are just a handful of Mad Ball things that I have in my collection that span from their origin in 1985 through the 2000s, even. So let's get a closer look. Up first, we have... Slobulus, who was my favorite as a kid. Dustbrain, who I didn't have. Hornhead, who was a hard one to find when I was a kid. And this is a remake of Screaming Mimi from the 2000 series. This is a head poppin' wolf breath. Mad balls, mad balls, mad balls. Gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. They're gross, funny, yucky. Mad There's ball. eight holders for eight more mad balls. Snake face, freaky fullback, splitting headache, lock lips, swine sucker, rose brother, wolf breath, six face. We play with a mad ball. Mad ball. We play with a mad ball. Mad ball. Mad ball. Now eight great mad balls are joined by eight great more. So separately from Ant Toy. Mad ball. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video of watching a 35-year-old man play with his balls. <laughs> anyway, I've got a lot of work to do. Christmas is coming up and all. Uh, ask your mom if she wants me to come down a chimney or if I should come in the back door as usual. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I am so sorry about that. Maybe a Christmassy home video would be nice. Okay. Again, I'm really sorry about Joe. I did not know he'd do jokes like that. Kids, watch this, you know. I know. Okay, start the home video. Okay, now it's time for the home video clip. don't usually do this, but I'm going to do a voiceover for this home video clip, just because the audio's not great on it. Oh look, Earthworm Jim figure, straight away. Uh, yeah, the audio's not too great on this video, so I thought I'd do a little voiceover, just to add a little bit to it. Um, so let's see. So there's me opening some presents, and my two sisters are there too. There's my Uncle Steve with the Christmas hat on. I think this is Christmas 1996, I think it is. Charlotte, there's my mum with a great haircut <laughs> my cousin Vicky as well, my grandma. Uh, I'm not sure who that is at the side there, I can't see them properly. I'm not sure. Oh, there's Barney the dinosaur. That's my sister Megan. Yep, she's gonna give it a hug. There we go. <laughs> I wanna see me. Oh, Ooh, what's that I've got? That might be a street shark. The box kind of looked like street... If you know what the box looks like for street sharks, um, comment below. That kind of looked like a street shark box, didn't it? So I think I did get a street shark. I think I got a PlayStation 1 this Christmas as well, but I don't think it was recorded, me opening it. What else have we got? What's Charlotte opening? I think that's Esmeralda something. Might be. She's got a lot of princess costumes and things like that. Not sure what that was. Oh, sweet. oh no, it's Barbie family or something. I'm sure that was a street shark out of my hand. Then. Oh, there's a pog maker, milk cap maker. Then, hey, I had that pog maker for years. I used to take that to school and everything. Loved it. Was that an Esmeralda doll? Yeah, it was. See, they're not even recording my stuff. I want to see what I got. <laughs> Terrible camera person there. 
Oh, that's. Oh, I didn't see. Oh, that might have been um, dragonflies. I'm sure I got a dragonfly that um, thing. It was kind of like a sky dancer, but for boys. I'm sure that was a dragonflies then. That's my Auntie Angela with the blonde hair and the brunette, I think, my uncle's then girlfriend. Anything else there? Oh, there's a game. Easy Cheesy, is that? Oh my god, that's one with the magnets and the um, the mice and everything. I'm gonna have to re get that. <laughs> it's great watching this. Oh, is that? There's a Goosebumps video. I'm pretty sure that's Goosebumps Tower of Terror, maybe, or something like that. Oh, that was brilliant. So, yeah, there you go. There's a little voiceover for Christmas 1996. Really hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. If you'd like to send in a home video clip, send it to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. The Odd Pod Show will return after the break. When you have a taste for the holidays, you want a soft drink that tastes like the holidays. You want the crisp, clean choice that's everyone's favorite icebreaker. 7-Up, the Uncola. Because you never know who might drop in. Stop by the Winter Wonderland for holiday savings on all 7-Up products. And make the season bright. N-E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle makes the very best. N-E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle makes the very best. This season, look for special holiday wrapping featuring me, Farple, on your favorite Nestle candy. N-E-S-T-L-E-S, new holiday wrapping from Nestle. Nestle makes the very best chocolate. Be me, what? I am your master. Mario is your enemy. The wicked imposter Wario has cast an evil spell over Mario Land. Don't let Mario get the six golden coins. Don't let Mario reach the palace. This is the biggest, most dangerous, most challenging Game Boy adventure yet. Obey Wario. Destroy Mario. Don't fall under Wario's evil spell in Super Mario Land 2. And now it's time for the TV show review brought to you by Arthur from Pocket Rocket Radio. Hey guys, my name is Arthur from Pocket Rocket Radio and you are watching The Amazing Odd Pod Show. So today I would actually like to talk about one of my favorite TV shows from the 90s and that is Cartoon Planet. Space Ghost, 15 seconds till showtime. Hey, Space Ghost, you know what I had for supper last night? What? Tortellini. Beef or cheese? Both. Five seconds. You know what I call tortellinis? My tubby little bundles of fun. So Cartoon Planet is actually a spin-off of its predecessor, and that's Space Ghost Coast to Coast, which uh, some of you may be more familiar with. Uh, just in case you're not, Space Ghost Coast to Coast is basically a satire of the original uh, Hanna-Barbera, like, early morning superhero cartoon show that was on TV back in the day. Yeah. Well, what do yeah. you yeah. put on hot dogs? I don't eat hot dogs. They make me puffy. What do you mean, puffy? You know. <laughs> puffy. Ooh. When it comes to wieners, I go for the whole bundle. Mustard, ketchup, onions, relish, chili, cheese, sour crowd. And I don't care how puffy I get. 
So Cartoon Planet basically has all the same characters except for Moltar, which is a bummer because I thought Moltar was freaking hilarious on Space Ghost Coast to Coast. But anyway, it's the same adorable characters. You have Space Ghost, Zorak, and of course, Brack, who is just like my role model as a child. I mean, like, what a brilliant, brilliant uh, character to look up to and aspire to be like. Hey, Space Ghost! You know what? What? That's what! <laughs> <laughs> That's what! <laughs> Get it? Hey, 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 Space Ghost, you know what? Hey, Space Ghost, you know what? No! Seriously, you know what? What? That's what? <laughs> Got you good, buddy! The show basically consisted of several short skits. Uh, a lot of these skits actually like were common throughout the entire uh, TV show series. Uh, some of them like included a mail time with Zorak. And one of my favorite things, and I think one of the most well-known things about the show were the musicals, which were just brilliant. It actually uh, ended up making way for, I believe, like two full-length CDs. And I actually had the first one, that was Space Ghost Musical Barbecue. And it was just silly. When I eat beans, I say it in my own little cloud. Nobody comes to visit me in my little cloud. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm cutting muffins. Because I love beans. Hey, hey, hey. I love beans every day. Beans are an excellent source of protein. I love beans. Ding -a -doo. Um, the humor here is very far from highbrow, and that's what I love about it. Like, it's not for people that take themselves too seriously. But my honest opinion about, you know, looking back on this show is some of these jokes are just, they're so stupid that they're genius. What sketch? There's no script, no direction. So far, it's just Brack rambling on like an idiot. Oh, I'm a rambling idiot. Rambling everywhere. I'm a rambling idiot. In my underwear. Go away. So if you still haven't checked out Cartoon Planet yet, go ahead, check it out. The episodes are all on YouTube. Like, I don't think they've made very many official DVD releases of the show. Um, like I said, if you if you love weird humor and if you were just into slapstick goofiness, you, you'll really appreciate the humor in the show. Um, looking back on it, and it's just been many, many years since the first time I've watched it, I was re-watching the old episodes and I just still found them to be incredibly hilarious. And if anything, I was able to appreciate some of the nuances in just the the absurdity of the humor now and uh, I, I found some of it even funnier now than I did as a kid so I think it's a great show and if you're looking for something that's just fun and silly and just you need a good pick-me-up check out Cartoon Planet it's an awesome show. Welcome back now it's time for Murray's Mail. Murray's Mail. Hey guys welcome to Murray's Mail, where I read out all the cool mail you guys send me. I have one letter today, but I'm sure it's great. But first, before I show that, I thought I'd show this. Well, basically, this was sent to all of us, so it wasn't just to me, but look how cool that is. That is from My Gamer XP, and wow, very, very cool. Yeah, so it's from Matt at My Gamer XP, and he also, if I can find it here, he did send a little note, but also, Stickers! Yeah, very, very cool. So, thank you, my gamer XP. Go check out his YouTube channel. Ha! <laughs> okay, now it's time to read the one letter that was sent to me. And this one is from Xander. And he says, Hey Murray, what is your favorite Pokemon game and why? From Xander Phillips, sent from the Batmobile. From the Batmobile? Wow, cool! You think he's Batman? No. So, my favorite Pokemon game might surprise you. It's Pokemon Pinball! I love pinball games in general, but the Pokemon pinball games are a lot of fun. The ball is a Pokeball and you have to try and catch each Pokemon whilst you are playing pinball. It's lots of fun.
The Game Boy Advance ones are good, but my favorite is probably the Game Boy Color one. It even has a rumble pack built into it, which is cool. Yeah. So yeah, Pokemon Pinball is my favorite Pokemon game. Okay, it's time to end the show. Thank you for your letters, Ender. This has been Murray's Mail. <laughs> Bye. If you would like to send Murray some mail, send it to oddpodshow at hotmail.co.uk. Great show. Time to wrap it up. And that's the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to follow us on Twitter, you can at oddpodretro. You can also follow us on Instagram at oddpodretro. And you can also join our Facebook group by searching oddpod on Facebook. We really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, etc. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. You can get back to Oogle and the Spice Girls again now. I wasn't. It was. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. It was research. <laughs>